Hello everyone, this is Steven again, and in the second part of this falling feather animation video that I'm doing, I'm going to talk about rotations and how to add orientation markers along the path. So if you watched the first video where I attached this object to this path and set up timing and you know, placed the ground and animated this so it'll follow along this path, you know, slow down appropriately, speed up where it needs to and eventually hit the ground you'll notice that i didn't add any rotation to this or, or orientation markers to this which is the next part it follows the path pretty naturally because the follow attribute is on what that means is the when the path curves the feather is curving with it and then i rotated the feather just a little bit at the start but it maintains its orientation to that path all along. So I want to be able to manipulate it as it's falling along. When it gets to, say, here, I want to be able to kind of have it twist or turn to make it look like a feather is getting sort of blown around or hitting wind resistance or, or air resistance right as it moves along, which it doesn't currently have. So right now it's kind of like a roller coaster just sort of following along the path. And I want to be able to have it twist and turn and, you know, do some movement along the path. So I'm going to press F here on the keyboard and zoom in here and go to frame one. And the first thing that I want to bring up is I really don't know based on the object orientation right now or how it's positioned, what is actually forward on this. And I need to know that when I start adding rotations. So I'm going to go up to display, transform display and turn on the local rotation axis. I have to make sure the object is selected for that because if I have something else selected, it will turn on the local rotation axis for whatever I have selected, right? So as I sort of move along here, you can see that it's following along. Now if I move out a little bit more, you can see the axis here. And Y is up, which is usually pretty typical for an object. Y is up on that object. Z is forward and back and X is side to side. So if I were to orient it like this, that is essentially how this object is oriented. So Y is up, X is to the side, Z is forward and back. But because I rotated this on the path, it's, it's already showing that it's off that axis. So that's okay, because this is showing me that right now Z is off this direction, X is off here, but Y is up and down, and I can manipulate those. So again, with this object selected, I'm going to go over to the attribute editor and I'm going to go to the motion path tab, which shows me the attributes for the attachment of this object to the motion path. So previously we did modify the U value, right? We animated that U value so the object would speed up, slow down, you know, start up. That U value is the path along or the value along that path from basically zero to one, meaning like zero to 100%. So 100% is the bottom, zero is at the top. So right now you see it's zero because it's set to one, the frame is set to one, and the U value is set to zero. So, and follow is on, which means when that's on, it's going to, as we see, the feather is following that path, and when the path curves, the feather curves with it. So it maintains its orientation along the path. That's why that follows on. The world up type is set to vector. And what that means is it's going to use the world up vector array. And this is the X, this is the Y, this is the Z. So in Maya, whenever you see this vector, a vector array is three different values like this, it's going to be X, Y, and Z in that order, right? So right now, world up is not set to X because it's set to zero. One is entered for the Y, so the world up is Y, and Z is zero. So if I wanted to change so that Z was up, then I would change that to one and change this to zero. So that's what that is letting me know, is it's set to vector, and I'm choosing what vector it is. Now I could choose the object up, which would hopefully be the Y, but you see it kind of flipped around. You could choose scene up, which is you know, what direction is up in the scene, which is typically Y. I can choose the object rotation up, but I choose vector so I can choose which one I want to be up on the path. I'm not going to worry about this inverse up and inverse front, but I do notice here that it says front axis is set as X, 
So the X axis is technically the front axis and the up axis is Y, right? So then we have this front twist, up twist, and side twist. And these are the values that we're gonna change as the object is moving along the path we're going to keyframe these values so that it rotates and sets an orientation marker. So whenever we keyframe these values, it is going to, you know, they're going to look red and it's going to set an orientation marker, right? So that's how this is all working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a key right initially. So I can just go over to the channel box if I need to, go to the motion path one, and I can see the front, up, and side twist values. I'm just gonna select across all three of those and press S on the keyboard when it's on frame one. So that sets my initial key. So that way the next time I get to a position where I want it to be modified, when it moves along the path, when I want to keyframe a new orientation or gradually get to that orientation, I'll set another key and it'll set another orientation marker. So I'm gonna scroll down here a little bit and I'm gonna select the path and you're gonna see that now it has this sort of three-way marker, an X, Y, and Z marker, as well as, you know, you're gonna see the one. So right now on frame one, there's a position marker and an orientation marker. So I'm gonna bring this down till about right here, and I wanna set another one, and I can change it, you know, slightly. So again, I open up that motion path, because anytime you select off and select on, it's gonna kinda go away. So I bring this back up, and there's a couple ways that I can manipulate this. With the object selected, I can press T on the keyboard. It's gonna show me this manipulator tool. As you see, it's the last tool used, this show manipulator tool, and that's what this is. And that's how we moved it along. We could you know, drag and move it. But now we can move these rotation markers. So I'm just gonna move this ring right here, and you can see it rotate. The one thing you'll notice is with the manipulator tool, when I rotate this, you don't see like this red one moving or the blue one moving, right? So you have to kind of guide this a little bit. You have to kind of trust what's going on with the feather and not what's going on with these rings. The rings aren't gonna show you that they're moving. And you can't use the rotation tool. I can't press E and I can rotate it, but it's not really gonna do it. It's not really gonna be able to keyframe that, right? So I can rotate it and see that, but I can't set that key. You'll notice that these values are not changing. You see the values changing over here, but these yellow little markers here are showing me that this motion path attribute is overriding that, right? So I could rotate it here, but I can't key it like that. But here you see the rings are moving along with it, but with the manipulator on, you don't see that. So you just have to trust when you rotate this how the feather is rotating, right? So I just rotated a little bit, and I'm gonna select those values again and I'm gonna press S on the keyboard, right? And what that's gonna do, I'm gonna move back a little bit, is it's gonna set an orientation marker. Now you see it's set at 115. Here's a position marker at 144. Here's an orientation marker at 115. So this is gonna show me what that orientation is like at that particular frame. So the feather is gonna move a little bit when it gets there. You can see it's, I set an orientation here and I just moved it a little bit here. Then it's kind of rotating around here, but when it gets to this point, I want to get to somewhere before it moves because this is the idea is that wind is hitting this or it's hitting some air resistance or something along this path to make it change direction. So I want to show that this is actually kind of moving around. So I'm gonna rotate it and notice when I do this, it's because this ring is not lined up with that. Again, you have to trust which direction you know, this is kind of going. So that'll work. You know, I can move it around like this, but you just can move it and manipulate it and kind of get it going the direction that you feel like it should be pushed, right? So I'm gonna kind of manipulate it like this, right? And if you want, if that gets a little confusing to you and you wanna be able to kind of get a little more control, you can actually come over here hold down control and drag, and it's going to actually show you what that particular value is actually doing, right? So I can kind of do this and get it to move. And what control is also doing is it's not allowing it to keep decimal points, right? So I'm keeping it as whole numbers, right? So I can just click and drag and get that going. So if it's not giving you what you want, 
you can actually kind of rotate one of the values. I'm going to do this and then rotate that value, right? So you can use a variety of these techniques to get it kind of going the direction you really want it to go, right? There we go. I know this gets confusing, but it's because it has its own particular rotational values. What's happening are two rings are kind of lining up. And if I turn on the, I'm gonna press E on the keyboard, and you can actually see when these rings move, you're actually gonna see the sort of orientations here. But again, that's not gonna show you, it's not gonna change these values, right? So I have to use that manipulator tool to rotate it. So I'm gonna get it to about right there. I just kind of, there we go. Now I can kind of get a little bit better rotation. And I'm gonna kind of show this and get it to move about like that. And again, go to the motion path, select those values, press S on the keyboard, right? And again, so that's now rotating this way and I'm gonna get it to about right here and I want it to kind of rotate it again a little bit. You actually see that I clicked in one of the values so I don't think it actually accepted that previous rotation and I can kind of confirm that because there's no marker, there's no orientation marker. So I'm gonna get it back to here. And what happened was, is I clicked into this value instead of dragging across them and it wouldn't set the key because it was waiting for a numeric input. So I'm gonna press T again, rotate this kind of how I feel like it should, maybe something like that. Select that motion path. Sometimes this will stay open, it depends on if you keep clicking in here and moving it, but I'm gonna press S on the keyboard. Now it keyed that and you could see a new marker being placed. And I'm gonna to get to about right here and I'm gonna press T again and I'm gonna rotate that back again, right? Now I've got a little bit more sort of natural movement. So I'll do this and let me bring it like this. And with those selected, press S on the keyboard. And so that's kind of the process as you follow it along so I'm gonna to get to about right here and I don't want it to look like a wing that's flying along. I want it to look like it's hitting some air resistance. So I'm gonna do this and I can just drag it in here and kind of rotate it, you know, something like this or kind of get it to go, there we go. And again, like if it gets a little difficult, you can click in here, hold down option, you know, get it to drag along. And I'm actually gonna set this to zero and get it to rotate back around like that. Because if I set all these to zero, that's the original rotational values. So now I can kind of get this to go, say this direction. And then again, motion path, select all those, press S on the keyboard. So then I've set another orientation marker and you see it kind of flips around, which might be kind of a nice thing, or maybe it's too much, right? So I might play around with that in the graph editor. So, it looks like I've got a lot of rotation going on, but it might look pretty good for that. So then I come back around here. I'm building an offset on this so that when it gets to this marker, I don't want it to happen at the same time as the movement marker. I want it to kind of rotate, slow in, slow out, come out and maybe rotate again. So maybe before and after the movement key, I'm gonna add some rotation because this again is like the wind is hitting it, it's slowing down, the wind is pushing it the other direction or whipping around the other direction. So I wanna add a little bit of rotation before that happens and a little rotation afterwards. So that's my kind of mode in this. So I'm gonna go to about right here. And I usually try to just play around with one or two of these values, right? Let's move this one this way. Or again, I can press T on the keyboard, kind of rotate that, get that going in a different direction select across the values, press S on the keyboard, or you can right click and key selected. Either way you wanna do that, that'll work. So I'm gonna go forward a little bit. Here's the next time it rotates. Press T on the keyboard and rotate this a little bit. Yep, the, see how those rings are lined up? But if I do that, it's just doing the same thing. So I'll move it this way a little bit. Get it going like, like this. I don't wanna look like it's banking, like a, a plane might bank or something, but I wanna give it a little bit of push going the opposite direction, right? So those are still selected, so I can just press S on the keyboard and then let it fly around here. 
and I'm going to do this so that it kind of feels like it's you know, kind of getting pushed around again to the wind. Move it like this. Press S on the keyboard. Those are selected. Again, go down further here. Go before this. Get it to manipulate a little bit. S on the keyboard. Those are still selected. Move forward. Get to about right here. I'm going to dip it like this. Move it this way. Maybe that way. And then press S on the keyboard again. Come around here, right before it gets to this. Move it up. And if I went, again, I can set one of these values to zero, or that one to zero, get it to kind of flip around, and then it's sort of oriented back, sort of lined up with the rings on this. And then select these again, press S on the keyboard, get it to come right here, Press T on the keyboard, move it around a little bit, maybe like that. With those selected, press S on the keyboard. And now as it's kind of landing, look how it's going through the ground. So now I need to kind of orient it so it's sort of landing basically as it hits the ground or I could have it twist or tumble. I mean, I could actually have it flip or whatever, like it hit the ground, but I'm gonna have it just sort of hit the ground sort of gently and stop. And let's go about right here, maybe like this. So now that it's going through the ground, I might have to change where the path is going because it's really close to the ground. And so I might need to put a movement marker. So I'm going to select the path. Yeah, it's already, it's going through the ground. I can see that. Let me put the ground into a display layer and you can choose this create new layer or better yet create new layer and assign the selected object and so that's my ground and I can set it to template or reference right and then I can kind of look at where the end of this path is and I can kind of grab that I'm going to right click go to control vertex select it press W on the keyboard to sort of move it up just a little bit and I'll turn that back to reference so that I can't select it. That way when I drag across, I could get there. And now let's see, oh, go to the end here. Now it looks like the feather is sort of gently hitting the ground. There's a little bit of space there so I can kind of grab it and move it down a little bit. So that way it kind of looks like it hits the ground. As long as it's not going into the ground, I'm okay. Right? And now I could actually take it here Let's go to this marker, select that, motion path, now I see all the keys. I can go to this marker or this marker, and then I can rotate it a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, I can always look at what number this is, and you can see it says 429. So I can just go to 429, and then select that and then you can see it's keyed on that frame when you don't see those red when it looks sort of an off red or a light red you can see that it's not right on that keyframe so that's another way you can kind of tell where you're right on that keyframe so then i can select it press the on the keyboard you know maybe rotate it just a little bit get it to do something right before it starts to land select that select these values press s on the keyboard Right, so now I've got this kind of doing a, a last bit of movement. Now let's go back and look at the whole thing. Actually, I will switch to my shot camera that I have set up. And I'm going to go ahead and play this through. Let me start at frame one. Play this through, and you can see how the feather is starting to kind of move along the path, flips around, does this neat little flip, which is kind of nice that it does that. I think I'm going to leave that. I might adjust it a little bit. And then it still to me looks like it's, I might want to back it over here. I think that it's doing, kind of looks too much like a roller coaster along here. So I'm going to look at that. Yeah, see how it looks like it's just sort of following along the path. And so I probably want to do a little bit of countering right there. Maybe right in here, I just feel like I need to back it up maybe. So I'm going to go to this one, 278. And let's set this to zero. Zero, and then let's press T on the keyboard. 
Let's do a little bit of movement here just to make it flip around a little bit more. And then S on the keyboard. And now I can, let's see what it does here. Yeah, it kind of flips around like that, which is kind of fun. Looks like it's getting kind of pushed in the wind. And then the same thing here. It looks like it's just sort of following along. So I could either go to the previous one, which looks like this is 251. So I can go to 251. You can see that those are the keys. And then I can either, you know, drag this, get it to move a little bit. So it doesn't look like the goal is not to make it look like a roller coaster going along a path. I want it to make it look like it's getting pushed around the wind. I'm just going to key select it, right? So that gives it a little bit more, you know, and then kind of flips around like that, flips around here, and then kind of slows down, dips, and slows down and hits the ground, right? So that's a good starting approach for, you know, getting the orientation. But now I want to open up the graph editor. So I'm going to go to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor, and I'm going to look at what's going on in the graph editor for this. A couple things to realize that I wanted to have some offset between the movement and the rotation. Now, because I'm keying the front up and side twist and it's setting an orientation marker, each time I do that, it's going to set that on the same frame. So I can't just go to say, you can see when I have the feather here, that it's got a U value, a front, and up, and a side. It's assigned, you can kind of see for the feather, it's assigned to the translate X. So these keys for the motion path are manipulating translate X. The same keys are manipulating the translate Y for that. So you can't, you're not actually keying the translate X. It's being driven by these different channels of the motion path, right? So when I look at the U value for each one of these, it's the same. If I look at the front twist, the front twist on all these are the same. If I look at the up twist, they're all the same. So if I select that, when you look at this, it looks like there's a lot more values than there actually are. But if I go down here to the motion path, these are actually what are driving everything, right? So if I just select the motion path, I can see that. Now with the U value, this is the U value. When I select that, the U value is there. It's just down here because these are rotational values and they tend to be a lot more. So a couple things I wanted to point out is anytime you see some really kind of bizarre movement, you might want to smooth those out. So I just kind of grab these and, you know, smooth them out just a little bit just to make sure that they're not like really super aggressive turns or bends or something. So I just try to make sure these are sort of flowing nicely. And you see something like that, you might want to do something like this uh, on this because it smooths out that motion. Now when it hits that key, it's actually, the twist is actually happening somewhere around here. So I'm actually adding a little bit of offset to this because the actual, you know, it's going this direction, it's rotating this direction, and it's rotating back, right? So this key is not what we call the extreme or, you know, that key pose. Right, so I'm kind of setting it to here. I'm just sort of adding a little bit of that offset for there. Right, so it's going to go here, it's going to rotate, it's going to come back. But I did that to smooth it out, which in some cases works out. This probably has to be flat because I, I don't really get much if I want to twist it. But it's kind of doing an aggressive turn and going back this direction. Now here's something where I want to kind of fix it up. So when I look at this, this value and this value are the same. And this value is the same. So if I look at this, you can see the value over here. See that? You can see the value. And there's no difference. So that key doesn't do anything. I can just get rid of it. But now I'm going to select across these two. Select across the middle, which selects those handles. And I'm going to drag them up. Just so I have a little bit of movement in between those. And it's not just static. So I look for those moments where I can kind of still get a little bit of movement. Because I don't want it to just stop. Right? I want it to kind of move and then kind of come back through. So I'm looking for these moments where I can kind of fix this up. Now I can go to each one and sort of look at that and see how they line up. You know, that's kind of a interesting move there because it's going to go one direction and come back, come go back, go back the other direction. So it's kind of flipping around, which at least it's smoothed out. So it's not like going to be a, a huge issue when it, you know, gets to these moments. So I'm going to look at this, and I've got that pretty much smoothed out. But here's another one of these. I'm going to select across those, just select across the middle, which grabs the handles, and then pull the handles down. And then you can see it makes a nice, you know, smooth motion in between there. I'm going to bring these up just a little bit. And then side motion, like that key, doesn't do any good. But the problem is I can't delete it 
because it is coordinated with these others. So I'm going to select these. So you can kind of see, especially with this front up and side, as every key that's there, I can't move one of them away from the others. They all move with it. Now I could, you know, move the timing of that, right, or the values of those, but they're all inherently tied together because these are inherently tied in terms of the motion path. Now when you talk about rotation and other objects, they're not usually tied. I can move the X, Y, and Z rotations, but in this case, it's setting an orientation marker and each orientation marker is the same. And like this, I could set them to the same, like this value and this value on that one channel are the same, but I'm actually having a little bit of rotation in between them. So just realize if I move one of them, you know, if I kind of move that around, you're moving the other two because they're just tied together. It's all set for an orientation marker along the path. So if I see something like this, I can't really delete it because it's going to delete the other keys that are associated with that on that same timing. So something like this I might normally get rid of because it's not really providing much for my motion like this. I could just naturally go from here to here, but because it's tied to these, I'm just going to leave it, right? Uh, one thing to notice is that this is frame one right here. Like that's happening on frame one. You could see right there, that's frame one. This one is the same value at frame 115. Now this, there's a little bit of movement and this, there's no movement. So when I look at the up front and side twist, there's movement on one of them, but not on the others. So I'm just going to move it just a little bit, just so there's a little bit of motion kind of going in that direction. And I usually can go in this direction or if I want to, if I want a little, you know, maybe anticipation, I can move it in the other direction and then have it come back, right? So we can try that. So we'll look at what that looks like. And now I'm going to look for, and I'm going to press K on the keyboard because I can scrub here or I can just scrub right up here. And I'm going to see what this does. And maybe I don't like how it banks like that. You know, there's an orientation marker right there. So maybe I want to change one of those. So I'm going to look for a value that might, you know, help me out here a little bit. So maybe I want it to be about right there. You know, maybe this one can come down a little bit. Look at this one and maybe, you know, maybe I want that one to be up here. So that might work out. I'm just kind of looking at that position and then I can kind of scrub to see sort of what that's doing. And then it's kind of flipping around right there and it gets to this orientation marker. And if I want, that's too much. I can kind of bring that up. Let's look at this one. I think I like that one and maybe I want to bring this one down just a little bit. Maybe it's just too much of an aggressive movement, right? Again, if I move it back and forth, you're going to see the whole orientation marker change and it's moving all these other values. So if I grab that one, you're going to see all of them change. So maybe I want it to come down a little bit. Right? And so that's how I kind of get my timing there. And let's say I want, you know, one of these to go sort of up. There's the bank. Let's say, you know, maybe I want this to kind of be right up here. And I kind of like that, right? So now I get it a little bit better motion right there. So I'm going to go kind of to the next one. And I like how that one flips around now and get to there. But maybe I don't like how that does that so much. And I want a little bit more of a, you know, bigger change. So I'm going to get this so I can see both. Let's say I move it about right there. And I can bring this handle down a little bit. Let me move this one so that it flows nicely from one to the other. And let's say, you know, I want to bring it like that maybe. And bring this one that way. Oop. Let's bring it off timing. If you hold down shift, you can constrain it. You know, if I just pull it up and down, I won't be able to move it left to right. I'm just constraining it up and down. Or if you hold down shift and I want to just change the value and I move it left to right, it's constraining it left to right, right, in time. So I'm going to keep it right there. I kind of like that. And now I have that sort of rotating around. And if I want it to rotate a little bit more, maybe I'm just going to grab that, not that rotation, get that kind of maybe kind of like that rotation. Bring this up. So maybe I want to kind of get it to rotate around a lot when it gets to that bend. Right. There we go. Now I kind of like that. And then it sort of gets pushed back a little bit move this down and I like that rotation 
This one feels a little bit too much like a roller coaster again. So I'm going to grab one of these values. I like what's going on here. So I'm just going to grab one of these and pull it maybe that direction. Grab this one. Go here. It might, I might have to grab that other value at the top because I think that's going to rotate around a little bit more. There we go. So I did have those sort of lined up, but I think this is going to be a better motion here. So then it kind of flips around, gets pushed around here, and I kind of like that. Right? Gets sort of flipped around, and then I think I'm going to leave the rest where they are. So that's how I kind of refine that. I'm going to go back to the U value and make sure that these are kind of going the direction I want. So if I want, you know, a little bit more or a little bit less slow and slow out, I want to make sure that these aren't flat because these should not be stopping at that point. Like if it's flattened out, as I kind of mentioned in the previous video, it's going to stop there. So I want to make sure that that's slow in and slow out. It doesn't completely stop and keeps going, right? Because if it stops, it's not going to look natural, right? So I'm going to close that and I'm going to go ahead and play it through. Let me start at the very first frame and play this through and you can see now I've got some of this rotation going and it flips around gets to this other orientation mark it gets kind of pushed flips around the other way you know picks up speed slows down and then eventually slows down to a stop at the very end okay. and that's a pretty good motion for this and I'm just sort of looking at this through the shot camera and that's mainly because I want to see what it looks like when I would render this out. So I do that, but I can switch to the perspective camera to kind of see it from all angles. But really, you're performing for the camera, right? I don't need to see this from all views. And that's why I added the slow and slow out where I did and added the rotations where I did because it looks good for that camera. Now, if I wanted to set up another camera and have it from another angle at certain specific times, it might not work out exactly for that camera, so I might need to time it for that camera. But the perspective camera I just used to kind of get around the scene, look around, make sure you know everything is working the way I need it to, but really, at the end of the day, I want to be able to have it look good for this camera because that's the one that's eventually going to render. Right. So that's pretty much all it is to refining this motion, adding orientation markers, manipulating those orientation markers, and getting this to look like it's being you know, floating around and, and getting pushed around with the wind and running into some air resistance. Right. So hope this helps and good luck with it.